Stabler Fracture Radiographic Evaluation We usually evaluate a Stabler fractures with X-rays and with CT scans. The X-ray is usually an AP view and Jodet views. These X-rays usually obtained out of traction. The AP view will show us the iliopectineal line, which represent the anterior column line, and the ilioacial line, which represent the posterior column line. You can see the roof of the establum, the teardrop, the anterior wall, and the posterior wall. How about the oblique views, the Jude views? Let's start with the obturator view. In the obturator view, you see the obturator foramen fully. The injured side will be up 45 degree. It will show you the anterior column and the posterior wall. The black views usually show you a column and the opposite wall. In the obturator view, you will see the anterior column and the posterior wall. You can also see the spare sign, which is pathognomonic for associated both column fractures. How about the iliac view? The injured side down 45 degree, the good side up. You will see the iliac wing fully. You will see the posterior column and the anterior wall. How about the CT scan? It helps in complicated cases. It will tell us how we approach the injury, what type of fracture we have, so we can best approach that injury. We'll also show the joint congruity, the size of the fragment, if there's any trapped fragment, or if there's any impacted fragment. In general, the wall is oblique, the column is coronal, C, Column C coronal. Transverse is sagittal or vertical. Transverse fracture of the establum is not transverse. And I'm going to show you diagrams for each fracture pattern as seen in CT scan. This is the anterior wall fracture. This is the anterior column fracture. This is a posterior wall fracture. This is a posterior column fracture. This is a transverse fracture. This is a T fracture. This is a posterior column and posterior wall fracture. This is a transverse fracture and posterior wall fracture. This is an associated both column fracture. This is an associated anterior and posterior hemitransverse fracture. The roof arc. The roof arc is an angle between the vertical line through the femoral head and the line through the fracture site on all three views. The question is, 
did the fracture line violate the weight-bearing dome? Because you want to know if you can treat the patient conservatively or surgically. And if the fracture violates the weight-bearing dome, then the patient will be treated surgically. A fracture establum that does not violate the weight-bearing dome could be treated conservatively. The problem is this measurement does not apply to the posterior wall or to the associated both column fractures. The fracture is stable if the fracture line exits outside the weight-bearing dome of the establum usually is more than 45 degrees in all three views. The 45 degrees is controversial. Examination under anesthesia, dynamic stress fluoroscopy is used to evaluate the joint stability after an isolated small posterior wall fracture of the establum. It's also used to test the stability of the fracture in a non-displaced column fracture. If the fragment is more than 50%, the hip is definitely unstable. When there is a question about the stability of the hip, you should do examination of the hip under anesthesia, regardless of the size of the fracture fragment. The size of the fragment is not a reliable indicator for hip stability. Even if the fragment is less than 20%, you still do the test. You will get the C-arm, you will use an AP and the obturator views, you flex the hip to 90 degree, and you will add axial force, and then you will check the hip congruity and the subluxation of the hip. Also check for opening of the medial clear space, which indicates any stability of the posterior wall. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.